गाइज वेलकम बैक टू टेक डोज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लुक एट काउंट एंड से प्रॉब्लम विच इज़ फ्रॉम लीड कोड नंबर थर्टी एट दिस इज़ फ्रॉम स्ट्रिंग एंड द मोस्ट चैलेंजिंग पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रॉब्लम इज टू एनालाइज द टाइम एंड स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दिस एट दी एंड लेट्स नाउ रीड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इन दिस प्रॉब्लम द काउंट एंड से सीक्वेंस इज अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ डिजिट स्ट्रिंग्स डिफाइंड बाई द रिकर्सिव फॉर्मूला काउंट एंड से वन इज वन एंड काउंट एट से एन is the run length encoding of count and say n minus 1 so the run length encoding is a string compression method that works by replacing consecutive identical characters repeated two or more times with the concatenation of the character and the number marking the count of the characters which is the length of the run for example to compress the string 33 222 and 51 we replace the double 3 with two times 3 so the first one is frequency and the second one is the digit that we are talking about then if we have to replace this triple 2 then we will say 3 times 2 that means 3 2 and if we have to replace 5 because it has occurred only one time consecutively right so we will say 1 time 5 thus the compressed string becomes 2 uh, times 3 3 times 2 1 times 5 and 1 times 1 so the count will always be representing the consecutive run of items it will never be representing non consecutive items so if i have 1 1 2 1 1 let's say somehow i got it okay it may not be valid but let's say somehow i got it then if i have to convert this by compression then i will say 2 times 1 then i will say 1 time 2 and i will say 2 times 1 i will not say 4 times 1 right so only the consecutive run of uh, same digits matter if they are non consecutive then they will be uh, taken care separately given a positive integer n return the nth element of the count and say sequence fine now i will be showing you a detailed uh, example by building it but let's look at one of the examples here uh, which is with n equals to 4 how they are building count and say 1 is 1 then if you have to write count of uh, count and say 2 you have to say 1 time 1 if you have to make count and say 3 then you have to make two times one right and if you have to go to the next count and say which is count and say four then with 21 you can say one time two and one time one so that is how you have got one two double one if you have an equals to one then according to the problem it was the base case and you have to return one now if you check out uh, the value of n then it will range from one which is the base case to maximum 30 now if you try to generate all possibilities right i mean i will be showing you like if you want to generate all possibilities then it will be 2 to the power of n you will understand this after having done the solution so that will become 2 to the power of 30 which is equivalent to 10 to the power of 9 which is beyond your 10 to the power of 8 so this should give you tle but i will explain you at the end why this is working okay now let's understand about building the number so i will be uh, showing you from 1 to 7 now it is always starting with the base case let's say that i wanted to uh, build the number or get the count and say value for n equals to 7 so i will be starting with 1 and we have a value 1 now when i want to go to the next count and say which is count and say 2 then take the previous number and count the frequency of each of the consecutive same characters or you can say same digits so one is occurring one time so the frequency will be written first so i have written frequency in green and the number itself in red color or orange color you can say so 1 1 okay when you want to uh, go, go to the next number 3 uh, then one is occurring two times consecutively so two times one and that's it when you want to go to the next number then two is occurring one time so one time two then one is occurring one time one time one and you are done covering all the digits of 3 then when you want to go to count and say 5 then you can say one time one then you can say one time two then you can say two times one all the consecutive same elements will be counted together so there are three groupings here right three groupings and that is how you got three groups now when you want to go to the next item then you can say that it will be you know uh three times one because if you count one then it will be three times one then if you count twos then it will be two times two and if you count this last one then it will be one time one so three grouping again and if you go to the next number then you can say that it will be 1 time 3 then 1 time 1 then 2 times 2 and then 2 uh, times 1 uh, right so this is how you can get count and say 
value for 7 fine now before we actually solve the problem you can analyze that if you have uh, let's say k number of digits 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 right then the number of digits that you will get next time will be doubled if all the group are of size 1 in this case if i take a smaller example 1 2 1 2 in this case there are four groups a group is defined as the same run of digits so there are four groups that means one is lying alone this two is lying alone one is lying alone and two is lying alone if I had written 1, 1, 2, 2, then this will be two groups where the, these two ones are lying together as the same digit and these two twos lying together as the same uh, digits, right? So if you have the number of digits as k and, and the number of groups as k as well, then surely the next uh, count and say that you get will be of size 2k. And how is that? I can write 1 time 1 because this one is occurring 1 time. This I can write 1 time 2. This I can write 1 time 1. And this I can write uh, you can say one time two right so the size here will be doubled so if i take the worst case scenario that i will be doubling my size every time then it is as good as saying that i will be multiplying by two every time this is a simple way to analyze the time complexity right so before even solving the problem i'm showing you the analysis for our uh, entire solution so the growth rate can be assumed to be two to the power of n i hope you have got this idea but let's first look at the solution and dive into the complexity analysis. So in this case, I will be showing you a dry run because this is more of a simulation rather than any algorithm. So here, if the n value was equals to 1, then you will be returning a value 1, which is the base case. Let's solve for n equals to 5. So what I will do is I will be using two loops. The first loop will be uh, for solving for the n value. That means we have to solve the count and say value. So the first loop will be covering the n value count and say value starting from 2 and going till the given n value right so in this case it will be starting with 2 and going till the given n value why not from 1 because n value 1 will have count and say value 1 that is the base case and that i will presume already so the number that i will assume will be in the string format and that will be already assumed for i equals to 1 so we will be starting to calculate for i equals to 2 and i will be assuming the variables where the counter will be telling what is the frequency of number at 0. So if you check number at index 0, then this is 1. So this 1 will be assigned to this current digit that we are looking at and the count will tell me how many times this digit occurs uh, in sequence adjacently. Okay, so that's what the count will tell me. So let's try to count it. So we can count it by using the J loop simply. So if I go uh, to the J loop starting from index 1, you see that there is no index 1. It is already out of bounds. So this for loop is not going to run. And when this for loop do not run, then at the end, you see I have written here two lines which will be updating my resultant string. And that will be equals to the frequency that is present, which is count equals to 1. So my new number which will be generated will be count equals to one, right? And the character which this current was storing, it was storing one. So you can write one, one. And this is for i equals to two. So for i equals to two, the J loop will not run, okay? You can even make this assignment in the same line, but I have just made it separately so that the result actually stores the final result, okay? Otherwise you, could, you can actually write it in the same line. Now let's solve for i equals to three. So for i equals to three, let's see what is the result. So when you start, then you have now two indices 0 and 1. So what will this current store? The current will be holding the value 1, which is number at 0. What will this count store? It will store the frequency of 1 being 1. Now the J loop will start from index 1 and it will check if the number at J is equals to current. Yes, it is equals to current. They are the same digits. So increment the counter. The counter value will become 2. Okay, the next time when J runs, the J loop will break because it cannot run right it is out of bound so once this for loop breaks then again the result will be updated to the last uh, character how many times uh, it has occurred right so how many times it has occurred two times so convert this to a string which is two times and we and which character has occurred two times the one has occurred two times so that is how you update the number number to two one and again your digit is zero comma one this is for i equals to three let's solve for i equals to four again what will your current store so let me write it here your current will be storing the num set 
zero number at zero which is two how uh, what will be the count value it is it is occurring one time okay and then your j loop will start from index one now it will try to match with the assumed uh, current character right assumed current character so it, this is two and the current uh, i mean this jth character is one so they are not matching if they are not matching then the previous group has ended and i have to print it so what i will print or what i will save in the number so the new number which we will be building which which i will be saving in the result it will be equals to the count okay and uh, the character that it was storing so one two that means one time two has occurred fine and now we will be overwriting i will be reassuming so my current character will become one and the count will remain to be one here okay it will be overwritten to one so i'll be going to the next position and this is out of bound so we will be stopping and this condition will run again so what is my count it is one and what is the character it is one so one time one has occurred so this is how you build the number let's build for the next one which is i equals to five so for this case if you have to run then these are indices zero one two three now what i will do is i will assume the first one to be the current character so let's assume one to be the current character and the frequency to be one and the j loop will start from the second value which is index one so two is it equals to the uh, previously assumed current character no so that means i have to print whatever is there so the count is one and the character is one that has to be printed and reassume these values to the current character being two and the count frequency being one and go to the next one so if you look at this one the previous assumed a character is not the same so that's why you have to print it up so one time two has occurred and then you reassume this to one and one because the character is one and one time it has occurred right so you go to the next digit this is one previously assumed character is one so they are same so increment the count you go to the next character and you are out of bound as soon as you are out of bound your for loop is going to break and this condition will run here and again you have to append the same thing this piece of code and you see this piece of code is is the same so you append two times one right so what has happened is i have written one time one as one grouping then i have written one time two as one grouping and two times one as another grouping right so this is how we will stop at i equals to five because we wanted to solve for count and say five and this will be returned as a result okay three times uh, one two times two and one time one three times one two times two and one time one okay now having understood this simulation approach let's analyze the complexity so as i told you previously that the growth rate can be a multiple of two so if you think the growth rate can be a multiple of two then the time complexity in such case will be two to the power of n because we are doing it n steps right one two three four and n steps and if you always expand in multiples of two the size because we are iterating through the entire string isn't it we are iterating through it therefore the time complexity is going to be two to the power of n but as we already saw in the problem statement that this two to the power 30 is not going to run and definitely that is true but if you dig deep into this problem then you will find that you can explain simple time complexity to be two to the power of n and that will be fine in your face to face round but considering the online assessment you might think that this solution is not going to work and so you will try to think about some other solution but the actual time complexity in this case is defined by the conway's constant this is out of scope of this problem because this is much more advanced concept as what we are solving here so i'll not uh, dig into this problem here the k value is assumed to be let's say 1.3 in such a way that the time complexity is order of k to the power of n and if i just happen to compare these two numbers 2 to the power 30 versus 1.3 to the power of 30 then 2 to the power 30 is approximated to be 10 to the power of 9 which will give you tle because the number of operations are greater than 10 to the power of 8 but if you compare 1.3 to the power 30 it is just 2.6 times 10 to the power 5 which is definitely way below your 10 to the power 8 and it will get accepted so that is a huge margin difference even for n equals to 30 and if the numbers keep increasing then you will find a lot of difference by using the conway's constant and the actual time complexity a tighter bound is order of k to the power n where k value is 1.3 rather than 2 to the power of n but uh, i think it will be 
almost impossible for you to even remember that this is the actual complexity so you can always answer 2 to the power of n it is fine now even if you look at the space complexity i know that uh, if we are generating uh, the string the last string will be probably the largest string right so if you are expanding it to two two times every time then the space complexity is also going to be order of two to the power of n which is the largest last string right so again with the same logic if you are consuming let's say one byte for every character then uh, it will be a huge uh, string and you can say that 10 to the power 9 times of 1 byte is going to be 1 GB because 10 to the power 9 is G. Definitely this much of space is not available and you will be getting a MLE which is memory limit exceed. Therefore if you follow this approach then you get 2.6 into 10 to the power 5 as the longest string and how, how much is this? If you just multiply it by 1 byte then you can just convert this number to 0 0.26 times of 10 to the power of 6 and you know 10 to the power 6 is 1 million right so this will boil down to being 0 0.26 mb only so you compare this 0, 0 0.26 mb with 1 gb and uh, there is a huge gap and that is why this will definitely pass so the real reason of this problem passing by the given solution is because the complexity is much lower than 2 to the power of n okay but it is fine by you even if you answer it 2 to the power of n no need to remember all these things fine let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this problem we are given the n value and i will be returning by just looking at the base case if it is the base case or not if the n value is greater than one then i'll be trying to solve by starting with the number one which is for n equals to 1 and I will be solving for all the values from i equals to 2 to n so every time I will be assuming the empty result string the count which is always 1 for the first character or the first digit and then I will be iterating for the rest of the digits if the current digit is same as the next digit or you can say that the digit that we are looking at is the same as the previous uh, previous digit that means the adjacent run of items are same then we will just increment the frequency otherwise if the adjacent item is not the same then i will be taking the previous group and printing it as let's say three uh, three times one that means count times the character count times character okay and then again reassume this new character to be the start point of a new group and so i will be assuming the current character now as 2 and and start the frequency from 1 and go to the next character right so this process was already explained and i think you will get it this is for just adding the last group of the entire string and then finally return the number so i think this problem is clear and if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming videos see you guys in the next video thank you